The non-zero point A has position vector ABC, and the vector OA makes angles alpha, beta, and gamma with the x, y, and z axes respectively. And then here we have a diagram showing that. By taking a dot product with the three unit vectors i, j, and k, prove that cos squared alpha plus cos squared beta plus cos squared gamma is equal to 1. Now this question actually gives us a hint about how to approach these. It's telling us to take a dot product with the unit vectors. So we have a vector OA, and we want to take the dot product with the unit vectors. So let's take the dot product with I first. So that's the unit vector in the X direction. Now, what is this equal to? Well, before we actually go ahead and calculate that, let's just think about what we're trying to get to. We're trying to get to something involving cos. So what do we know about dot products? Well, there's a formula for dot products, which is the dot product of u and well, u dot v is given by the length of u times the length of v times cos of the angle between them. So cos theta, where theta is the angle between the two vectors u and v. So this is probably something that we're going to want to use because it's involving cos. So we can see that we have a cos right here and we want to end up with something involving causes. So let's go ahead and apply that formula to OA dot I. So this means that it's going to be the absolute value or the length of OA times the length of the unit vector I times cos of the angle between them. But what is the angle between the vector OA and I? Well, we're told in the question that it's alpha. And so here we can see that we've got cos alpha popping up, which is good because that's what we want to have in our final answer. Now let's actually work out the dot product of OA and I. So what is the OA vector? Well, that's just AI plus BJ plus oops, CK. And we're taking that, we're dotting that with I. And then that, of course, is equal to our right-hand side, which is the length of OA times the length of I, but what is the length of I? I is a unit vector, so its length is one. So if I'm multiplying by one, we don't have to write that, and then cos alpha. Okay, what's our left-hand side? Well, we're taking a dot product, and to take a dot product, we just times the components. So the coefficient of I times the coefficient of I, well, that's A times one, which is A, and then b times zero, which is zero, and c times zero, which is zero. So on the left-hand side, we're just left with a, and on the right-hand side, we have the length of OA times cos alpha. Now, the length of OA, we can work that out. We know that that's going to be the square root of a squared plus b squared plus c squared, but I'm just gonna leave it written like this for a moment. But let's actually just rearrange this so we have cos alpha as the subject. That'll be a over the length of OA. And I'm going to call this equation one. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to get similar results for cos of beta and cos of gamma. And since the process is going to be exactly identical, except for in the second line, instead of dotting with I, we're going to dot with J and with K. What we can do is we can say similarly, we have these two results as well. Cos of beta equals, instead of A, it's going to be B over the length of OA. And we're gonna call that two. And then we also have cos of gamma, which equals C over the length of OA. And we're gonna call that three. And then what we're going to do is we're going to square each of these results. So what we can say is squaring one, two, and three. And then we're going to add those up. So squaring them and then adding them. So squaring individually before adding. And then adding gives the following. Okay, well. The left-hand side is going to be cos squared alpha plus cos squared beta plus 
cos squared gamma. And that's obviously why we squared them, because we wanted to get those coses as squared, because that's what the question wants. But what's the right-hand side going to be? Well, it's going to be a squared divided by OA, or the length of OA squared, plus B squared over the length of OA squared, plus C squared over the length of OA squared. Of course, we can make a common denominator. So A squared plus B squared plus C squared. All of that divided by the length of OA squared. But what is the length of OA? Well, we said it before. The length of OA is the square root of A squared plus B squared plus C squared. And so if we were to square that, we would lose that square root. And so the denominator of our fraction is now just going to be a squared plus b squared plus c squared divided by a squared plus c squared plus c squared. And of course that is 1. And that is the final answer.